Today, our guest is going to share an insightful and honest story about her launch into the world of real estate and her DEI experiences along the way. Let's get to it. Hello and welcome to the Elevating Voices channel. I'm your host, Ty Harrison, and we are continuing our series of conversations with real estate and real estate lending professionals regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion within our industries. We will also continue to discuss dynamics that are impacting home ownership rates among Black and Latino communities in the United States. And we draw attention to people and organizations that are working to make a difference. Now for introductions. Again, my name is Ty Harrison, and I work within SWBC's Financial Institutions Division, and I head up our Lending and Insurance Solutions Group. I've been working with financial institutions uh, in the areas of lending and insurance services for the last 18 years, and my group currently consists of our appraisal management company, our white label PNC insurance agency model, and our private market flood insurance programs. Now, today we have with us Ms. Raven Pfeiffer of ValueLink Software. Raven, thank you so much for coming in. You know, I've been working on you to try to get you in to join the show. Yes. We're very happy to have you here with us today. I appreciate you guys having me today. I'm really excited for this conversation. So. All right. All right. Let's get into it. To formally introduce my guest, Raven is a results-oriented strategist and business development leader for ValueLink Software, which is based in Houston, Texas. ValueLink Software provides industry-leading appraisal management solutions for lenders, appraisal management companies, and appraisers. In her business development role, Raven partners with CEOs, executives, and business owners to help them address their productivity and efficiency needs as they relate to the property valuation process. Raven is also a University of Houston graduate and earned her bachelor's degree in logistics, materials, and supply chain management. Very awesome. Yes. All right, Raven, let's get started. I've been All dying right. to do this. Let's get to the story. <laughs> so before we get to the really good stuff, um, I just want to ask you a little bit more about ValueLink as a company. Uh, if you could give us a little bit more background about what you guys do and, and the value you bring to your clients. So uh, ValueLink provides automated appraisal uh, technology for AMCs, for lenders, and for appraisers, right? Mm -hmm. So we help automate that process um, and to make sure that, again, the lenders, AMCs, and appraisers are having an efficient process to, um, to basically navigate that valuation process. All right, so like as a client, I know that we really appreciate the order management and the order uh, placement tools that are in the system. But uh, for me personally, I really appreciate the, the quality control checks that you guys offer and the automation of those checks. Uh, again, as an appraisal management company where we're, we're, we're focusing on uh, providing accurate uh, appraisal values and, and, and unbiased appraisals, mm -hmm. uh, it's very critical for us to have those quality control processes. And in order to be efficient, those automated points and automated features definitely help us uh, you know, do what we do. So you know, as a result of all of that, again, we, we really appreciate the partnership with ValueLink and really appreciate what you guys do. So you know, um, I will say one thing, ValueLink is an ever-growing platform, okay? Um, so we actually like to take, you know, take in, in control um, one, that piece, and then take on those partnerships with you guys and with all of our other partners mm -hmm. to help us continue to build and grow that platform, right? Yeah, um, uh, kind of. Go ahead. To that point, sorry to stop you, but okay. to that point, I, I know that we've worked with you guys where we, you know, we're telling you about something we want, and no sooner than we're saying, you're telling us about all these things in your pipeline mm -hmm. that you're hearing from other partners that are, are trying to do different things too. So yep. again, just one more, more reason why it's been really good for us to work with you guys. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, would you mind if I jump back, though? Because I oh, yeah, really want to touch on this. Please. Okay, mm -hmm. so the quality control piece, I really want to emphasize this, okay? So this quality control piece specifically, um, I will say that we have been working on that uh, on that module, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one piece in particular that I um, can say I really appreciate is the piece that actually kind of catches on to some of the appraisal bias, bias. verbatim expressions mm. in the aired appraisers mm -hmm. or appraisals, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so our platform does help with that. And again, working with partners like you guys and everyone else kind of helps us continue to grow and build that um, that system. Yeah, and we're looking forward to that because a lot of the, the features that we're, we're using, I don't want to call them legacy features, but there's some of your automated, you know, things that you guys have been doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, while we talk about some of these features that are helping us today, knowing that you guys are coming with new features that yeah. are specifically fine-tuned to help with some of that bias yep. situation is, is definitely uh, something that we, we're very happy to hear. So, again, like I said, just very happy to partner with you guys. Thank you for everything that you do with us. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I'll let the team know. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get into some of the good stuff, right? So um, right. let's transition just a bit. So... You know that I'm on a mission to help expose students and young business professionals to career paths that are connected to this, you know, wealth building real estate machine that seems to 
drive so much of the economy uh, in the United States at, at the very least. Um, and for, you know, like when I look at this, how cool can it be if we can actually bring black and Latino business professionals into this business so that we can address the home ownership and wealth gaps um, that if, if real estate is really behind so much of this, this wealth in the United States, how cool is it that not only can you own real estate, but go and build these incomes off of this uh, business um, like so many other people are. So, so for me, there's just a silver lining in that in terms of being able to go and get these folks to come and help us address these big issues. But here's an opportunity to go attract black and Latino people into the business to be a part of the solution, but to also benefit from working right. in this space. And, you know, knowing that with you in particular, you're one of these people who were in a different industry and at some point decided to come into the real estate and real estate lending world. Maybe you can talk to the audience just a little bit more about, you know, what made you or what you were thinking of when you were making that decision to actually enter into this business. Previously, I was actually in cybersecurity IT world. OK, and I was doing that for a little bit of time. And by all means, that career is great. That career path is it's, it's very Beneficial, right? But it's also very demanding, okay? Absolutely. And I actually wanted to take some time out and do a couple of things that I wanted to do on the side. Um, and I was blessed enough to do that. Um, <clears throat> value link or being or becoming into the uh, mortgage industry was something that I'm sure, like everyone else, it just kind of fell into my lap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This was not something that I was looking forward to. And um, quite honestly, I had no knowledge of this. This mm -hmm. was this was not something that I was taught. I was not. I wasn't, I don't know anybody in this industry until just recently, right? When I've just gotten to this industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I, I've seen that so many times and the same with me, like I, I didn't, you know, coming out of the NFL, <clears throat> I remember going into insurance and a lot of my friends uh, that were still playing ball, they're like, Tario, man, you're the, you're the insurance guy. Like they're giving me grief about you're the insurance guy. Yeah. Uh, and again, just like them, I had no intentions to ever get into insurance. I'm a finance econ grad. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go work for Wall Street or something. Uh, and so I go work for a financial services firm and we're, providing insurance to banks. Yeah. And uh, again, it's just, uh, it was all, you know, when you get to the bottom of it, so much of that is still driven by real estate and mortgage lending and that kind of thing. Uh, but just like you, I, I found my way into this industry. And it's one of the things I really like to talk about on the show is like, here you are, <coughs> cybersecurity. I mean, in San Antonio, Texas, cybersecurity is a huge thing. Everywhere is a huge thing, but right. uh, we, we specialize uh, in, in many ways in cybersecurity within within the city. Uh, and you have lots of resources that are tied to that. Lots of people are dedicating you know, their career paths to that. And here you are as one of these people who caught on to that same thing, saw that was a great opportunity, but those same skill sets on the technology, uh, front end of technology and these things you guys are doing, you're an example of how you can bring that into this real estate world and how people can help expand their ideas of what it means to be in insurance and in real estate and these different businesses. Uh, so for me, it's just it's just uh, a great opportunity to show the audience or those young students uh, that, that, that keep up with our show, to show them someone like you who, who yes, went in looking at cybersecurity, found your way into real estate in this unique angle uh, leveraging technology. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Um, and would you mind if I just said just, you know, just just something that I feel like I honestly, I really want to say it. Absolutely. Um, by me joining into this this mortgage industry, kind of getting a um, a different view. Right. So so looking at something new like this, um, this was very beneficial for me in the sense that and I'm this may sound crazy to some people. OK, um, growing up, I didn't I didn't I didn't know or I didn't understand what home, or owning a home was. Mm -hmm. OK, um, every two to three years when I was younger, we would move houses. And I'm thinking, you know, from the age of you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever the case may have been, me moving homes like that, I thought that was normal. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I also had friends who have been in homes their entire lives and that's all they knew. Mm -hmm. OK, um, again, being exposed to this mortgage industry has taught me. Quite a few things. Okay, I actually Absolutely. just purchased my first home, 2021. Congratulations! Thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, but honestly, I don't think I would have done that if I was not a part or was aware of the mortgage industry. Was you know what I mean? I agree. So, I agree. yeah, and, it, and even from my perspective, uh, you know, my parents owned a home, but the the thing that really got me was seeing them. Uh, with land and, and, and basically trying to tell us how important it was to own this land. It was not very special land. It was just a piece of land that my dad inherited from his grandfather. But it, it, it kind of stuck with me that, you know, that this was important. But I never connected the dots. Uh, yeah. Really, it was important to me because it was in my family. It didn't, I didn't connect the dots of what it means in terms of true wealth in this country. Mm -hmm. and, acquiring property and actually it, how, how that has driven so much wealth here. So, uh, you know, I'm very appreciative of my parents giving me that little glimpse, but like you, until I was older and saw a lot of this for myself of what's really happening and the significance of, of owning real estate and being a part of these, these, these business models that generate so much 
uh, income for so many people uh, just really didn't understand that. So uh, again, thank you for being here because here's our opportunity, hopefully, to reach more people who maybe have a similar story uh, to help them understand that by being a part of this business, it can help you as you go to actually generate your own wealth, to actually Absolutely. own your own real estate. These careers give you an opportunity to learn a different side of a business that you need to be a part of anyway, yeah. at some point, one way or another, if you're just looking out for you and your own family. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you for sharing that about you know how you got into Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And the, you know, honestly, I can go on and on, but I know we we kind of have like a time frame. We can sit here all day and talk about this. You know I, don't me, I can talk all day. So, so I, <laughs> I don't want to do that, yeah. but um, I, I definitely uh, appreciate you kind of shedding a light on things like that too, because like you said, it needs to be... Um, People need to be aware, right? Absolutely. So it's it's all about an educational um, educational thing. Um, having access to some of those resources. Once yes. people get that, then I think it'll you know I, I think it'll pan out. There's a big group of people who are qualified to to own homes and and do things like this. They just don't have the resources, right? So they don't have the information. And once we give that to them, shows like this and having those these types of conversations, I think it'll benefit. I mean. Absolutely. organizations and as well as the people themselves. So. I agree. I agree. And, and I appreciate the support. So so, so keep supporting <laughs> us. I appreciate it. And again, we appreciate having you here. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep this thing moving and, and ask you uh, another question. Okay. Now, okay, so you and I are both at a lot of the same conferences every year, right? I see you at these conferences and, you know, I've, you know, I've seen it. I've been doing this for 18 years, or almost 18 years. Uh, where I'm working within the financial services industry, I'm at a conference and I look around the room, and you know I can count bl five black um, uh, executives or black representatives in this conference other than myself. Yeah. And you know for years and years and years it just kind of irritated me to try to understand you know is it really this bad? Is there like how could there be so few of us here? Um, <clears throat> and you know the the more I've looked at this and and, and like for instance when I met you. You know, walk up and, and start talking to you and see how well you 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 represent your company, a company that we were already working with. Uh, and, and again, just one more reminder: while there should be more of us here, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, when we talked and after we we spoke that day, you were telling me how ValueLink really values the whole DEI thing and how you your experience with ValueLink and diversity and inclusion has been a very positive one. So, yes. I was just hoping that maybe you could share with us a little bit more about your experience in the areas of DNI uh, with. With with value link. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, for starters, the organization is owned by minority, right? More minority group. Um, so these guys really take the reins and they truly, truly help out their their employees. OK, so again, me coming from cybersecurity, IT, I had no idea what the mortgage industry was. I had no idea the mortgage industry even existed. Mm. OK, um, these guys actually took a chance on me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it took a chance on me and have elevated me. I will completely say that, you know what I mean? Um, elevated me to the point where, where I can come to these conferences, right? Absolutely. So I can meet people like you and other people in the industry um, and to be able to, to grow my brand, if you will. Right. Absolutely. So these are direct words from, from leadership there, Raven, mm -hmm. grow your brand first. Let's build you. And oh, then, that's awesome. yeah, let's that's build awesome. you. And then, <clears throat> you know, you being a part of value link that would only help us and build with us, you know, build mm -hmm. us too. So that's something I truly, truly appreciate with these guys. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's times, you know, a lot of, a lot of the times, you know, as the sales manager, as the business development manager, right. So we're required to go and make sales. Right. So that's Absolutely. kind of the whole ordeal with the whole title. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, these guys don't work like that. Mm. Okay. Um, for instance, I actually just came from a conference. Um, the next conference, oh, um, yes. So quick side note, that conference is a um, is a safe space. It's it's truly a safe space. That, that's what I felt when I was there. Right. So mm -hmm. it's I know it's really directed towards a lot of women a lot of times. But there is, you know, diff different, definitely men that shows up there. But yeah. um, it's a safe space. But I'm um, going back. These guys, specifically leadership, sent me said, hey, Raven, take the time out and go learn more. OK. okay. I myself, you know, I pat myself on the shoulder. OK. I am very versed right now in the mortgage in the mortgage industry. Okay, I can I can have conversations, I can do those types of things. But but again, these guys are trying to elevate me more That's to awesome. the point where they're telling me, Raven, in a couple of years we see you here doing what those women are doing, speaking on these panels and yeah. doing these things like that, right? Yeah. 
Um, so I was not required to bring home any sales. I wasn't right. required to do anything like that. Yeah, they that's just, spectacular. Yeah, yeah and, and I looked that up. I remember when you went to that group and uh, we, were, we were talking about certain conferences, uh, like we do with all of our partners, yep. and I'm sure you do too. Like, which the good conferences? What are you trying to do? And you had mentioned that, and I looked it up, and I was like, this is all ladies. I don't think I can be at this conference. And you can. you're like. I just went to that conference and that was incredible. Yeah. You need to look that up. So uh, I, I talked to other people in the company or other people here that have been at that conference and they all said this, the same thing of, of how Good. empowering that conference is. So yeah. uh, thank you for mentioning that to those of our audience. Uh, yeah. And I, I think a little bit later, you might have opportunity to say a little bit more about them. But uh, again, it sounds like a great opportunity mm -hmm. to, to for, for young professionals to go out and yep. get some mentorship and some connections and a network that can help them grow. And Absolutely. it's awesome to hear that Value Link is built that way and that that's the way they think of things. Um, I can say as a, as a client, and also as a vendor at many of these conferences, uh, when you look at the Value Link um, booth, it, it, it's one of the more diverse booths that you're going to see. You're going to see uh, different representation there, and yeah. it's always nice to see that. Um, you know, when you're at a conference, to see that diverse representation of a yep. company. So, so Raven, before we let you go, uh, we like to just ask you if there are any organizations or uh, just any um, anything that you think that our audience might want to be a part of, or they could go to as a resource to get more information about these DEI efforts or any kind of growth efforts that you think could benefit them? Um, well, there are honestly a couple organizations. Right. Um, DEI, I definitely want to say that NAMBA is one of those organizations that great. you want to at least get involved with. Um, and then the organization that I was speaking about earlier, Next, um, oh, yes. I'm going to you know just touch on that a little bit more. Uh, again, it was such a safe space for a woman, for you know, for me. Mm -hmm. um, but again, men are definitely welcome there. Absolutely. Um, but I think that that organization is something that is very powerful, um, a lot of information, and I, I think it's beneficial. Very good. And, and we've talked about NAMBA before uh, with the SWBC Mortgage Company uh, actually supporting that organization. So we will make sure we provide some information about both NAMBA and the next events that uh, Raven is telling us about, and uh, you guys should definitely take a look at those and learn more about how they could help you as you go down your path and chart your course. Raven, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Uh, we wish you nothing but success with your career, and please keep being open and sharing your personal experiences with others. We both know that that helps educate and that helps open doors for so many people. So again, we wish you nothing but the best, and thank you for coming in, and thank you for sharing. I appreciate you guys for having me. All right, absolutely, Truly. absolutely. Okay, as always, I want to thank all of you for joining us. We will be back with a new guest, and we will continue these conversations. Uh, we want to continue to learn more, share more, and do more with all of you. Again, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Hey, thank you guys for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. More videos are on the way.